Well, we saw the rand hit and then uh, move over the 12 to the dollar mark for the first time in two weeks as markets ready for key risk events coming up this week. Joining me on the line now to go through uh, some of the movement we are seeing in the forex space is Jamil Ahmed from Forex Time. Jamil, thanks so much for your time this evening. So we've had reports out suggest that the EU has agreed to a two-year transition period for the uh, UK when Brexit kicks in from 2019. Any detail to have emerged around what we're now looking at? Thank you very much for having me, firstly. Yes, it certainly looks like an interesting week in the financial markets this week. Got a number of key different risk events, but today it's actually this news that possibly the UK and the EU have made some progress with the Brexit deal that's created a lot of volatility in the British pound. Um, it's still uncertain what this will mean for Brexit over the longer term in terms of implications for the UK economy, but this news today has led to significant buying interest in the British pound, and the British pound is above 140 handle against the US dollar for the first time in over a month. And that's not just it. We've got a lot of other weakness in high yield and currencies, such as the Turkish lira, Russian ruble, South African rand, as investors eye those risky events later this week. Absolutely. We'll be drilling into the detail of uh, the rand and some of the event risk that uh, sits on its horizon, Jamil. But before we head there at all, 140 on the pound, what are you making of current valuations? Actually, the what... British pound at 140 against the pound is pretty uh, fairly valued when you talk about where the UK economy is standing right now. Um, we're actually looking at quite a key technical level because if you look technically at the charts over the past couple of weeks and month, 140 has been seen as a significant psychological resistance level in the British pound. So basically what I'm looking at today is to see whether the British pound can conclude trading above the 140 level. This would signal that the British pound could possibly continue its momentum this week. However, if we do see some profit taking in the pound over the next couple of hours, it signals that traders are still a little bit undecided when it comes to the British pound. Let's not just forget, it's not only the uh, Brexit headlines this week. The UK's got a Bank of England policy meeting. There's UK inflation data. There's jobs figures. It's a very busy week for the UK pound as well. Absolutely. And of course, uh, amidst a very busy global uh, picture as well, Jamil, I mean, you alluded to the fact that it's all these uh, risk events that have contributed to uh, the weakness we've seen in the RAND, for example, uh, along with other global risk assets. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the US Fed's latest stance on uh, monetary policy, because that is what's going to be eyed this week in particular. Are you uh, with the lot on this uh, pricing in a, a rate hike come Wednesday? Absolutely. It's definitely one thing to look at very closely. Um, a Federal Reserve interest rate increase for this week is pretty much already baked into the dollar. So what investors will be looking at is the accompanying statement and especially the first press conference from the new Federal Reserve Chair, Mr. Powell. And if he signals to the financial markets that there is potential for four U.S. interest rate rises this year. It does have the potential to create further volatility in the market. So we're definitely looking at a busy week. Yeah. There's G20, you've got Brexit meetings, you've got these concerns over a potential Trump war when it comes to trade, and also the unpredictable nature of the Washington White House as it is. So it's certainly looking like a busy week in the markets. As far as that dot plot is concerned, what are you forecasting? Are you looking at more than three high, uh, rate hikes for 2018? I wouldn't say never say never to four interest rate rises. However, let's point out that the Federal Reserve have been on this path before where they've signaled to the markets that they might raise interest rates more than forecast, but then they back down from that thought later on in the year. Um, the U.S. economy is definitely ready for more interest rate rises. Economic data is very strong. What the Federal Reserve might take as a complement or as a clue for further interest rate rises is that the noise over the Federal Reserve is no longer causing as much of a reaction to the emerging markets and the global markets as a whole. The signals of the markets are quite prepared for the reserve monetary tightening, but there's other event risks such as the potential for a Trump trade war and this unpredictable nature of the White House policies. This seems to be what's playing on an investor's mind and why we're seeing quite a lot of losses in the stocks and high yield and currencies today. I wouldn't say it's because of the Federal Reserve this week. Yeah. Uh, locally, we've got ratings agency Moody's making its uh, latest pronouncement on South Africa's
sovereign credit status on Friday. It's widely being expected to refrain from downgrading the country any further. Are you as optimistic? I don't think it's likely that there will be another ratings downgrade, but if you look at the price action in the South African rand so far this week, it doesn't seem to be that this is what's causing weakness in the rand. Um, all high yielding currencies today from the rand, the Turkish lira, the Russian ruble, they're all down by over 0.5% against the US dollar. And this signals that what investors are really concerned about is not this potential for a um, regions downgrade from later this week. It's actually the G20 meeting, potential over Trump trade, war, these implications, Federal Reserve this week, and also the news over the past two weeks over more reshuffles within the White House administration. Absolutely. Well, let's leave it there, Jamil. Thanks so much for having joined us on the line this evening. Jamil Ahmed is with Forex Time.